Right, so today I've got to work on this uh, Ideal Logic Heat 24. Uh, this is a heat only boiler and the sump has failed, which is a regular thing on these. Uh, not too regular, but it does happen. And I'm going to show you how to do it. If you read the book for these, it tells you to remove the main heat exchanger. Um, and I'm going to show you a way that hopefully you don't need to do that. Uh, so keep watching the sound on this. You're going to find most of it. I have to voice over because although the customer was nice enough to let me film, um, he was making some quite important phone calls in the background. So, all right, keep watching. Okay, so let's get into this. Uh, just undo the two screws on the bottom here to get into the boiler. Uh, and pull the two metal clips down. Uh, that gives you access to inside the appliance. And uh, I'm sure I'll film in here, so give, give you a close-up of what the actual issue is. So I'll skip to that now. Okay, so isolate the gas. Power's already isolated to this appliance. To get that down, you push that button there and you can pull the front down. Uh, so I'm going to show you where the actual defect is. First thing I'm going to do though is just take this little, uh, this little uh, rubber connection between the trap and the sump off. Um, the fault is above this, uh, which I'll show you in just a second once I've made access. So first you've got to remove these two screws. This is where the fault is. It lies behind this cover and nine times out of ten engineers will... Um, incorrectly diagnose it as being a leak from this cover so if you look to the just above this right hand screw here you can see the white staining on the sump uh, can you see that there uh, what it is there's a slight crack behind this uh, this little cover piece and it, uh, it shows itself by leaking usually down the right or left hand side of this um, and it's a hairline crack you can't see it it leaks very very slowly and it only leaks once the you from cold once the heating once you turn the heating on. So if you look here, I'll get it in the light in a sec. There's just a very slight hairline crack. So boom, there you go. Can you see that in that light patch? That's the crack, and that's uh, that's where the water comes from. Like I say, it takes a long time to uh, to appear, and can be quite difficult to uh, to trace. So here I am disconnecting the gas valve. And now with that, uh, with them two screws removed and that cover plate, you can remove this here, which is like the flue collector. It just takes uh, the product's combustion from the sump up to the flue outlet. Uh, now I'm undoing the, the lower nut on the gas pipe. Uh, once this is uh, undone, I'll undo the one on the underside of the uh, gas valve as well. Uh, allows you to take that pipe out uh, because we're gonna, we need to disconnect everything that's joined to the top. To the bottom of this boiler so we're going to take out this gas valve complete we're going to also take out the bracket that it's mounted on that the uh, spark generator is also mounted on um, now to get rid of the bracket you have to re remove the gas valve completely you don't have to take this nut completely off but i always do I find it a bit easier um, so once that's out as you can see i just pulled the gas valve out now we undo the screws that hold this bracket to the uh, heat exchanger, not forgetting the cables. So we've got um, an earth cable uh, and a HT lead to disconnect there, and then we've got the um, the live neutral and earth that power this to disconnect a bit lower down. So we got that off, it's a bit difficult. Pull there, that's the live neutral earth pulled off. Then we undo these screws and we can remove this bracket completely out of the way. Now, here obviously, I'm doing this one handed um, because I'm trying to hold my phone as a camera uh, while I go pro film from the background, so it's going to fall off now. And this is how I'm actually doing this. As you can see, I can't have you know, I can't use two hands when I'm filming this stuff for you guys. So that's how I'll just take out any screws I've dropped and everything else. Now, time to get the trap out. These can be a bit fiddly. You twist them, they twist, I don't know, about 20 or 30 degrees. Uh, and then you kind of have to pull them up and off to the right. If you watch how I do that, there you go, it comes out. So you sort of, you pull it up and push it towards the right. Um, I just wanted to show you, this is the uh, water that's in this case. Uh, now we need to undo this screw back here. Now some of these, for some reason, I'm sure have two of these screws, but it's been a long time since I've done one. But this one's only got one. You need to loosen this screw off enough that you can move the heat exchanger like that. You can see that heat exchanger pulling away from the back of the boiler. Now you break these, not break them, you just bend these lugs back here 
to separate the front of the sump from the heat exchanger. This is quite easy. Once you've done all three, as I have there now, you see this the front of this moves quite easily. This way you need to use a slight bit of brute force and often wedging something behind the back of the heat exchanger to hold it off the back of the boiler. Gives you a little bit of extra room for the back brackets. So you force this down. Um, I have a screwdriver wedged behind it here and there you go. With a little bit of brute force I forced it down and one of the one of the lugs on the back, the plastic lugs that is on the sump that we're changing broke off. There's the debris in the bottom of the sump and there's the lug that broke. I just collect that at the bottom of the boiler and watch the spider run away when I pick it up now. Give it a sec. Look at him. Oh, he's running away, poor little fella. Um, so now that's out. That's the new one ready to go in. And as you see, we've still got a live boiler full of water. We haven't drained down. We haven't had to do anything. So I give it all a clean up with my pink cloth, as usual. Um, and I'm just going to clean the underside of the heat exchanger as well in case there's any debris there that's collected on the seals and then you'll see me film it now the important bit of this job is not getting the sump out it's actually getting the new sump on and sealed and knowing that it's safe now I think that's probably why Ideal might recommend you take the uh, heat exchanger out because it's much easier to tell if you've done that when the heat exchanger is out so here I'm popping the three clips on, to, on the back first so I'm not worried about the front going on, I just want to try and hear three clicks as the back goes on. Um, once I think I've done that, this is how I check it. Now this is the important bit, this is the bit that is key. I'll get my phone around the back there, you can see two clips there. So there's the first one, that one's on. And if you look in a sec, you'll see the second one. There's the second one back there, and that one's on. And the last one you have to film from the other side of the heat exchanger, which I'll do now. And there you go, that one is on as well. So I know all the clips that hold the sump on to the heat exchanger are on on the back. Um, so now I'll just re watch the video on my phone, and I'm sure that it's fitted correctly on the back now, which is where I think I think this is where the problem lies. I do don't think we're capable of uh, being able to do that. So now it's just a case of forcing it on the front. This can be, this requires a bit of brute force again. You have to, you know, give it a good yank and you'll get it on. Uh, and then once again, once that's on and you think it's on, you need to refilm it with your, uh, with your phone. You need to go back round it all, check all the clips are on again. And once you're happy with that, it's time to start reassembling the boiler. Um, the key point of all this is you need to check all around this with your analyzer um, and you also need to do your combustion checks and all that with the case on fully and sealed um, so you know you haven't got any combustion no POC leaks so you've got no vitiation um, and you've got complete combustion so obviously that just getting all this back together now greasing up all the seals as you can see if it, if it goes well this job is actually very quick um, I, I, I'm not sure if I've ever done this on the combi, so the combi might be a lot more hassle um, because the pipes obviously go down, but I don't actually think it will be that much more hassle. I, I may have done it, I just can't remember. And obviously if I ever do do it, I will, uh, I'll film it. So... Okay, so basically uh, reassembly is... Um, the exact reverse of disassembly so you need to get everything back together you see I've just sped everything up here um, obviously the key points are you've got to you know use leak detection fluid on all your joints you disturbed plus I always go to the joints next to them as well I never never just do the like for instance this nut here I've only done the top nut but there's no way I wouldn't check that other nut off the gas valve um, because all the prying and whatnot you could have move that pipe so you see I get this uh, bottom pipe in here get it all tightened up uh, and then I turn the gas on this me leak detecting the pipe so that was all fine 
obviously the outlet of the gas valve I do both of them nuts even though I only disturbed one I do both of them nuts with the boiler running and make sure that they're okay um, and you always uh, check any valve you've disturbed because in case they leak out the spindle so this is the trap back in and I'll put that little rubber elbow back on the top connect the electrics to the uh, to the gas valve here and now we're uh, ready to go can you go and turn it all on for me, please? Cold water and heating, please. Yeah, everything. Okay, so this is the important bit of this job, is proving the safety. So uh, get the boiler all set up, the customer's putting on heating and water. I get my analyzer sorted. Um, and basically, I do my combustion analysis, but I do it more than once here, so I basically, get the boiler running, case off, here's the readings I get. Um, I'm now, with the boiler running, I'm now gonna leak detect all them joints on the outlet of the gas valve that I couldn't do when it was, uh, um, when I only had the gas onto the inlet. The, uh, the other important thing with this is you must now do a combustion analysis with the case on because if you have any leak in that sump, even a tiny leak, it will uh, it will vitiate and it will cause extremely high levels of uh, of CO. So as you can see, my analyzer is still on and running. I'm uh, I'm getting all the screws in, getting the case back on. Uh, this video is obviously edited, and you can see this is uh, fast forwarded here or it's uh, sped up. Um, but the analyzer was probably on this from maybe 20 minutes in total uh, sitting there running battery was going flat which is brilliant um, as you can see that 90 millibar inlet or just under and the combustion ratios are perfectly safe but you have to be extremely sure on what you're doing with these